Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farah Batool, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video related to pseudocodes. So we are formally going to start the syntax of pseudocode. Okay, the first thing that we are going to learn here is a pseudocode for an assignment statement. Assignment statement is something where you are assigning values to data items and specifically the variables. So let me just quickly tell you that what is a variable in a programming language. Okay, a variable is basically a memory location. We call it a memory location where you can store any value. You store data and it must have a meaningful name. What it means, meaningful name means that the name must represent the data inside the variable. Let me give you an example for it. Let's suppose if a variable is storing student name. So, you should write the variable name as student name. Remember that in pseudocode we have learned that the names of the data items must start with a capital letter whenever you use a word. Or if it is storing percentage, then you can just write down percentage as the name of the variable. So it must be very meaningful and it must represent the information that is being stored in the variable. Next, in pseudocode, the operator that we use for assigning values to a variable is a back arrow, this one. This operator is used to assign values to variables or data items. Okay, what is the use of this operator and how we can use this? Look at this. Whenever you use this operator, there is something written in the left hand side and in the right hand side. What are these two things that you have to write? And you need to understand that. On the left hand side, we will be writing the name of variable. that we are assigning a value to and on the right hand side we will be writing the value that we want to store in the variable. Let me quickly just give you an example. Just take the same example of a student's name. So the name of the variable, variable will be student name. And the value that you are assigning is, let's suppose it's Farva. So this is how you are going to assign the value to a variable by using this operator. Now there are lots of examples, depends upon the data that you want to store. Okay, let me explain you this one by one. Let's suppose if the data is integer, Integer means any number which is not decimal, which is a whole number. Like it can be 10, it can be minus 40, it can be negative or positive, but remember it must be a whole number, not a decimal number. Like we can use 250 and whatsoever. So when you want to assign a number, just let's suppose there is a variable named score and then use the operator and just assign any integer to it. Let's suppose 50. So the value of 50 will be stored in this variable that is score. Just look at this. Let's suppose this was the memory location. We called it score. We gave it a name score and the value that is inside the score is 50 that we just assigned. So in this way, a number is stored in a variable. It can be any number. Now, the next thing is if you want to store any kind of character or 
a group of characters so we call it strings let me tell you what is a string a string is any character like a b c d group of characters a string can also store any number and also a symbol so it's a collection of all of these it can be a collection of all of these or it cannot be let's suppose you want to store a password which is a string so what you will do password is the name of your variable use this operator and let's suppose the value of the password is um it can be pineapple at the rate 1 2 3 so you can see that it is a collection of numbers symbols and characters so in this way you can also store any string in a variable but remember that for characters for symbols for string data type you have to use this quotations it's very important otherwise it is not going to recognize what data is being stored there okay next to it is a boolean what is a boolean value a boolean value is either you are storing true or either you are storing false in a variable so it can be any kind of true false like it's a variable that is um let's take a name is vaccinated is vaccinated is a name to a variable and you are going to store a value true in it if a person is vaccinated let's just talk about a covid example so if a person is vaccinated you will store a value true in this is vaccinated variable otherwise you can also store a value false in it so in this way you can use a boolean variable where you will be storing true or false value so no need for the quotations to store a boolean true or false value in the variable so quotations are only applied where you are uh dealing with characters group of characters symbols and integers along with characters so yes this is all about the type of variables we also have decimal variables we call it float or real so this stores a decimal value let's suppose the marks of a person marks of a students are in decimal so you can just write down marks as the name of the variable and store 9.235 so this is how you are going to store a decimal value but no need of quotations in it okay this is all for the type of variables now let's quickly go to some of the assignment examples and we will see that what is the actual data that is being stored in the variable okay so let's quickly see the examples of the book and then we will go towards an activity okay so here are some examples that i have uh, shared from the book okay examples of pseudo code assignment statements now we will see that what is the name of the variable and what is the value being assigned to it look at this the first variable name is cost and it is assigning an integer value 10 so look at this cost has the value 10 stored inside okay the next example is the variable price this is interesting here the price is assigned a value cost multiply by 2 it means that you can also assign values by using the mathematical operators so this is what actually the value is basically cost multiply by 2 cost we know that cost is a variable that has a value 10 so what will done actually here 
will be multiplied with 2. So 10 multiplied by 2 is 20. So basically what you are doing, you are assigning the price a value of 20. So in this way, you can also assign a variable such a value that is like this, like cost multiplied by 2. It means that one value can be assigned and several values can be assigned by using a mathematical operator. So this is very interesting. But the important thing is that basically it will calculate that uh, cost multiplied by 2 by just putting the value of cost 10 into the formula and then the actual value of the price variable will be 20. Okay, the next is text another variable text now in text again they did what price is a variable you multiplied price with 0.12 so it means that you can use mathematical operators or any formula and it will calculate the value by putting the uh, the actual value in the variable multiplying it with 0.12 and then the calculated value will be stored in the variable text. So in this case, you are going to put the value of price that is 20 and multiply it with 0.12 and finally you will be getting 2.4. So 2.4 is stored in text. So this is interesting. Now next is selling price. Selling price is another variable. It is going to be price plus tax. Now again, the same thing. Price plus tax means putting the value of the variable price that is 20 and putting the value of tax that is 0, 2.4. So collectively, when you add it using the addition operator, it will be 22.4. So look at this. Selling price has a value 22.4. Next, the other variable here is the gender variable that is storing a character. So remember that I have told you whenever you store a character, group of characters along with numbers, symbols, whatever. If you store a string, you have to use the quotations. So gender has the value M stored in it. Chosen. Chosen is a Boolean variable that stores a value false in it. So look at this, no need of quotation in a Boolean value to be stored. Okay, these are some of the assignment statements. Now let's quickly do an activity from the book. So you will get this topic in your fingertips. Okay, so here we go. This is activity 7.3 from your book. What values will the following variables have after the assignments have been completed? Let's quickly do that. Amount is a variable. So amount will have a value of amount has a value 100 in it. Next, total price amount multiplied by 3.5. So it is actually 100 multiplied by 3.5, which will become 350. So you can just write total price, price has a value 350. Now the next is discount. In the discount, just write down its a decimal value. Discount has a value. 0.2 in it. Final price. Now, final price is assigned a value that is a collection of variables that are connected with mathematical operators. So, what you need to do, put the mathematical, put the integer values inside that and calculate it with the form, formula that is applied here. What it means, total price was 350 minus again total price is 350 multiply by discount is 
0.2. So after calculating this, I get it will be 350 minus 350 multiplied by 0.2 is 70. And when you subtract it, you will get 280. So you can simply write, let me write it here. Final price has a value. value 280 okay next we have name variable here name variable is storing group of characters in quotation so name has a value value nikki which is a name and next to it is interesting this message this is something that you need to understand here. So the quotations, whenever you write something in quotations, the value is directly saved in the variable. So let's suppose a message is a variable with this memory location. So first of all, there is a hello that you have stored in quotations. So hello will be stored as it is. And then it's a plus. Plus means that you are concatenating. Concatenate means that you will join the two values so that it will be written together. So you can see a little space after hello. We will have another a little space here. And then we will write the name value because name is a variable and variable must have a value. And we have seen that in the name variable earlier, we saved Nikki. So now we will be writing Nikki after hello here because the value of the variable is stored, not the variable name. So look at this. Hello is stored as it is because it was in quotations. It was a group of characters that were stored in message and this hello is concatenated with the variable name. So variable name is not directly saved as the name. It is saved with its value that is Nikki here. So in this way, you are going to store values in the variables. Okay, I hope that this is clear to everyone. And in the next video, we are going to talk more about writing pseudo codes and its syntax. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned, stay connected and please do not forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.